Hey guys, we are talking today about increasing your sales with a mind shift. Yes, we're going to shift your thinking. My name is Lainey Sullivan, and today I have Stephanie Callahan on with me, and we're going to talk about your mindset and your sales process and how you can change and update and upgrade your thinking to increase your sales. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm so uh, excited to finally be here. I know, me too. We're good. I'm glad you're here. So let's just dive right in. Okay, right. so before we focus on the sales aspect of our business, we always want to get into our business and sell, sell, sell. But we kind of have to define and know who we are, not really what we need to do, but we need to find, define who we are. So let's talk about how do we do that? Well, so time management experts all over the place will tell us that the tasks, to take the tasks that are in our head and put them down to to-do lists, right? And to-do lists are really, really great ways for us to think through of all the things that you need to do. But there's something that we frequently don't do in addition to our to-do lists. And researchers will tell us that our behavior is driven by our subconscious mind. And studies will even say that 80 to 90% of what we think, feel, and do is controlled by our subconscious mind. And yet, we don't spend a lot of time thinking about that. So if you want more money, if you want to have better relationships, if you want to attract the right clients, the best thing that you can do for yourself is spend a little bit of time thinking through who you want to be within those conversations within your mindset. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And I, I love that because I think a lot of people, they do, we get into this to-do list and I'm a to-do list girl. I love a to-do list because it's easy to just go through and knock it off and feel like you're accomplishing things. And right. it's really great. But <laughs> we have to, I love it. We have to define. So how do we turn this list of doing and this to-do list process into being and and why if you can tell us why do we struggle with that transition in our head Oops. so change is change is really hard right i mean a lot of people don't want to shift so in order to to get new results it's critical that we're willing to try new things and we have to upgrade our experiences in order to do that but one of the reasons is that our subconscious mind tries to keep us safe. And I know that sounds weird. What, what do you mean by safe? But what we know is safe, even if it's stuff that we don't want. So in order to flip that around, we've got to make some conscious choices to rechange, to retrain our subconscious mind. So within that, what I'm going to encourage you here to do today is to choose who you're going to be in every single interaction. Would you like to talk about what that means a little bit? Uh, yes, please. Let's do that. Okay. So it's turning your to-dos into to-bes. So Dr. Wayne Dyer says, your purpose isn't about what you do. It's about your beingness, that place within you from which your thoughts emerge. And that's why you're called a human being rather than a human doing. And so what you want to do is really start consciously choosing in every action that you have, what's your thought process going to be? What's your mindset going to be? So for example, let me give you a really simple example that you, that hopefully most people can relate to in one way or another. You are in the car and you are in a tremendous amount of traffic and you are heading somewhere important. And we're going to give you two being choices in this example. You can either choose that you're going to be frustrated or you can choose that you're going to be forgiving within the course of your drive on this really busy freeway or interstate. And all of a sudden somebody comes in and they cut in front of you. Now if you have an emotional response of frustration, you could potentially swear a few times, you could hit your steering wheel, you could scream, you could be angry, you could get to wherever you're going and there's so much negative emotion tied up in that one interaction that it could hang with you all day long. And when it hangs with you all day long, it impacts everything else that you're going to be doing in your day as well. Now let's look at that exact same situation, only the morning that you're on that busy interstate, freeway, highway, that you've chosen that in your state of being in the day, you're going to receive information with a forgiving mindset. You're going to be forgiving. And that person comes in and they cut you off. 
instead of getting really angry, you know, you could be shocked. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. I'm glad there's no accident. But then you could also look at it and say, well, you know, maybe they were rushing to the hospital. Maybe they had a bad day. And when you're in a forgiving mindset, because that's who you've chosen to be, you all of a sudden start thinking of all the reasons why something could happen rather than having that negative emotion. And what happens with that then is you get to your destination, and by the time you're there, that incident has almost already disappeared from your mind so that you can stay focused within your day on what you're going to do. And what you do with all of your your interactions is literally just choose the states of being that you're going to have. Are you going to be loving? Are you going to be forgiving? Are you going to be powerful? Are you going to be accommodating? Are you going to be collaborative? And just by consciously choosing those states of being, it changes your outcomes because it changes how you interact within those outcomes. I think that is so relatable to people, that example of getting the car and being frustrated and going, and then it messes with your day, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a car, right? It could be right. any any right. situation that just, and it throws your day off. And I love the, the idea and I've done it and I personally have done this. I'm like, you know what? Sometimes it's just, it's just not worth the fight, right? It's not worth the, the inner struggle. So I, I love that. So you guys, this is a really great opportunity for you to wake up in the morning and change and choose to be, to be, choose to be. I love that. Right. Well, so, it, you know, it's about being your bigger you. Right? Mm -hmm. It's about, we all have these, we've heard the phrases, the smaller you, are you being the small or are you being bigger? And some people look at that bigger you and think logistics and numbers and lists. That's not what I'm talking about here. When I say it's about being your bigger you, I mean it's that person that you always want to be. It's that person that, you know, if you think about it, if, if when you pass away, what do you want people to say about you? It's that more expansive, welcoming, open person if that's who you want to be. Now, if you want to be curmudgeon and angry and, you know, somebody that's confrontational all the time, well, then that's who you choose to be. <laughs> but, but my point here is, most people go through their day and they just let their day happen to them. And I work with purpose-driven entrepreneurs. And in order to be purpose-driven, you have to, have to be able to be conscious about the choices that you make and you take 100% responsibility for the outcomes in your day. And if you take 100% responsibility for the outcomes that you have in your day, then you also have to take accountability for how you respond to things that are going on in your day too. Amen. Preach, sister. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So as we're, as we're making these choices, right, we're waking up in the morning, we're starting our day off and we're making these choices and we get into our business. We get into the functions of what we're doing. How can changing the do to the be impact our sales process, our business process, and how we interact with our customers in, in our day-to-day -day activities? Awesome. So I want to give you two different examples. They're actually real examples of one of me when I chose to start implementing this into my life and one of a client. So let's start with attracting clients or customers and how this whole process can change that situation for you. When I first started my business uh, back in 2002, the last thing I wanted to do was go to face-to-face -to -face networking meetings. Um, I would have rather had a root canal. And so I originally would go kind of be a wallflower, quiet. I was insecure. What do people think about me? A little afraid. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have had those feelings when they've gone to networking meetings. But networking meetings weren't really working for me with, with that mode of thinking. <laughs> I wasn't really connecting with people and I certainly wasn't making sales. And so I decided to shift and I decided to choose who I was going to be. And I made the ultimate decision that if I was uncomfortable walking into those rooms, I bet there were other people that were equally uncomfortable. It couldn't just be me with the law of averages. And so I decided that going into those networking meetings, I was going to be connecting and collaborative and welcoming and friendly and powerful in my own way, not overpowering, but just standing in my own power. And what happened when I went into the networking meetings doing that is I connected with so many more people because the first thing I did was I went and looked for somebody that looked uncomfortable. 
who are the other wallflowers that were in that room? And I approached him and said, hi, I'm Stephanie Callahan. I'd, I'd love to know more about what you do. You know, just very simply and very welcoming. And what I heard, um, it happened to be uh, a women's organization that I first tried that at. And what I heard was a number of women that said, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you came and talked to me because I didn't know how to start a conversation. But the only reason that I, quote, knew how to start that conversation was because I was going to choose to be friendly. And what did friendly mean to me and how could I be friendly to somebody else? It was a conscious choice for how I was going to be. Once I made the conscious choice of my state, my mindset, then the actions that I took had to correlate with that state of being. So from that, I've continued to use that strategy with every, you know, with events that I go to, events that I speak at, networking events, it, it doesn't matter, personal or uh, business-wise, it's made a big difference in my ability to connect with people when I'm in a group of people face-to-face. -face. So that's one way that you can apply it. Should I talk about sales too? Uh, yes, most definitely. So one of my favorite stories in applying this particular concept is with one of my clients that was able to double her sales just with this one concept. Now, I teach a lot of different sales strategies, right? But she was having problems, not in attracting clients, but in actually closing the sale. And she had a really great program. She knew her stuff. She had all the right education. You know, the, the things that she was offering her prospects were solving the problems that her prospects had and yet she still wasn't closing the sale. So she was doing all those things that all the other sales experts tell you you need to have in place, all those foundational things, and she still wasn't closing a sale, and she was really stuck and, and lost. Is Stephanie, you know, what is going on? You know, why can't I get this? And so I had her take a look back and really think through how she was feeling before, during, and after every sales conversation. And what she found was that she was apprehensive, she was fearful, she was self-conscious, and she didn't really believe that she could make a sale. So it was all in her head, right? It wasn't anything that had to do with what she was actually offering. And so I asked her, well, who do you need to be in order for your prospects to step up and say yes to themselves? And she's like, well, I definitely need to be empowering. And... I need to be able to listen really well, you know, and she started thinking through all the different things that she had needed from people that she had bought from, you know, what did they exude and how did she feel comfortable with the yes? Because the interesting thing about sales is that when you're having conversations with people, even if they don't know why they've said no, there's usually something going on in the background of their own mind saying something just doesn't feel quite right. And if you're sitting with the mindset of fear and anxiety, people can pick up on that. Even if you're having a sales conversation over the phone, people can pick up on that. But if you consciously choose how you're going to carry yourself, again, it impacts how you respond. So then when you're in a sales conversation, rather than worrying about, are they going to say yes? Are they going to say yes? Oh, gosh, I really want this money. You're sitting there and you're saying, okay, I'm going to be empowering and I'm going to be understanding, and I'm going to be loving, let's say, in your sales conversations. When you choose to be that type of person, the interaction you have instantly upgrades. And people can feel that. You know, if you choose to be empowering rather than, oh, I really need the money, when you're empowering, the other person's going to pick up on, oh, gosh, they're making me feel like a stronger person already, and I haven't even started working with them yet. So my client ended up applying those things to her sales conversation, and it did take her a little practice. You know, she, she dipped back into the, the fearful mindset a few times. But, but once she applied that, the very first time she applied it, she had a $5,000 program sale. And before that, she hadn't been able to sell those programs. Now, did her program offering change? No. Did her bonuses change? No. Did the sales script change? Well, maybe a little bit because she changed who she was in delivering the program. But really that sale came about because she changed her mindset and chose to be and stand in a different place and a different power within the conversations that she had. So, and that's huge. And I, I want you guys to, I want you guys to understand what Stephanie is talking about. Like it's really, really about changing your mindset. 
And when I'm, I'm going to give Stephanie's secret away. She has a workbook for you for free that she's giving away today. So Steph, do you want to tell everybody where to find that? Sure, sure. If you go to stephaniecallahan.com, and Callahan is spelled with one L, if you go to stephaniecallahan.com slash B, B E, really simple. Uh, you can go to the sign up page for that workbook. The workbook will help you work through more specifics. I mean, you know, obviously in this show, we have a short amount of time that we can talk through things. And this workbook will walk you through a bunch of different situations where you can think through who you want to be. And I know this concept just sounds so simple. But what's magical is it's so simple. <laughs> it's exactly. something that anybody can do. And every single private client that I've ever introduced this to is, has been able to have instant mindset shifts in order to get to the goals that they're wanting to get to. So you guys, if you want to start changing your mindset or even just making some tweaks, right? Sometimes you just need to have something to walk you through and remind you what you're supposed to be doing, what you think you're supposed to be doing or what somebody says you should be doing. But go through the workbook, walk through the process. You can reach out to Stephanie. And Steph, where can we reach you in, in general? So you can go to stephaniecallahan.com. You can find me on my site. And in the upper right-hand corner of my site is all my different social media links. Um, I am a connector, so if you write to me, I will write back. I'm not just out there pushing publications all the time, and I love meeting new people. But start at stephaniecallahan.com. And she is a connector, so definitely connect with her. She's amazing. So thanks again, Stephanie, for being on with us today. It's, it's brilliant, brilliant. So Thank you. And you guys, we don't forget to hop over to the forum at rcuwomen.com slash forum. We are jamming and jiving over there. It's awesome. And if you want to connect with me, you can connect with me at dlsmanagement.com. And we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.